Yo, it's your old host, and today will be a quick video, just illustrating something very interesting about EEPROMs. The humble EEPROM, or erasable programmable read-only memory, has a very interesting way of storing its data. The EEPROM stores the data as a charge. There is a floating gate transistor. Floating gate MOSFET inside the EEPROM. Which basically means the gate is insulated. And a charge can be injected through that insulating layer with a higher voltage. But because it's insulating, or insulating to the lower voltage, the charge remains. That charge remaining means that bit is programmed. Obviously, an electrical charge can vary in intensity. So still, so what you're actually doing is not necessarily storing just a charge or an absence of charge, but it's possible to store a certain amount of charge. EEPROMs are being used in such a way as, as if it were you were storing an absence or presence of a charge. But in reality, because the charge can vary, some interesting things can be done for data recovery off of bit-rotted EEPROMs. Since an EEPROM is erased using ultraviolet light, incident light from the sun over a period of time, such as a week or so, or even over the course of a few years under fluorescent light, can deteriorate the data if the quartz window of the EEPROM is not covered. Because that ultraviolet light allows the charge to float, to, 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 to dissipate. But because the charge can dissipate in certain amounts, it's possible to still recover an EEPROM whose charge has dissipated enough that it has gone below the threshold voltage of where the EEPROM says whether it's a 1 or a 0. But if you lower the power to the EEPROM, the VCC, the voltage, a little bit, it will bring that trip point down as well into a region where the not fully erased but partially erased bit can be recovered. And that will be illustrated using audio stored on an EEPROM that has been partially bit rotted probably from sunlight. I just had this EEPROM and maybe ambient light from a fluorescent light too. I just had this EEPROM sitting in here for a while. I didn't run it through the eraser to get it to the state that it is now. Because the eraser has a, a strong UVC uh, germicidal lamp inside which just blasts it with UV and it'll erase a chip and in uh, 10 to 20 minutes. But using this music on an EEPROM, I can illustrate this point easily. You may have seen a video I made in the past where I made a device that was capable of recording sound onto an EEPROM. Now the recording quality isn't very good. This EEPROM was, was, uh, had music put onto it using an actual EEPROM programmer, such as the one seen here. To make a very basic simple adjustment of the voltage to the chip I have put a 500 ohm trimmer in series with the VCC of the EEPROM and I'm monitoring the voltage right here. Now with the VCC all the way up I'll turn it on. You can see the voltage is 4.8 volts, which is coming from this power supply built into this device here. 
and you can hear the clear sound of bit rot having taken place. This music was not done by me, it is from a Lego stop motion video I found that is absolutely fascinating. Sounds extremely bad. You can tell the data has definitely been corrupted. You might think it's irrecoverable. But now let's turn down that voltage a bit. You notice it's a little bit less bit rot now. Turn it down a bit more. Even less. Now you don't hear any of that bit rot static. Now I don't know how well this would go with an actual program data to be honest with you. But I believe this principle would work. If the, if, the, if the program data is not erased to the extent that you completely have, lost, completely have lost charge, but you still have some charge, but not as much as it used to have, lowering the VCC voltage should allow you to recover data off of old EEPROMs. Because now the exact same EEPROM that had that bit rot at that lower voltage Sounds like it wasn't erased partially at all. And just to illustrate, I didn't do any tricks here. Didn't change EEPROMs or do any tricks of editing. This may prove to be very useful for recovering EEPROMs from old equipment that have been partially erased, but not fully erased. I would like to attempt to see if I can recover it using an EEPROM programmer. I don't know if that's possible because I don't know if it will allow me to lower the VCC enough while I read the chip, but it's worth at least a try. Here I am on EEPROM programmer software. I, 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 I apologize for the uh, screen. Um, but anyway. Right now VCC is 5 volts. If I read it, and I look at the data, if you're used to seeing audio, 8-bit unsigned PCM a zero volts audio signal or the absence of an audio signal is going to be 80 in hex, 80 in hex. It's hard to see any of that. There's a lot of F's, a lot of high hexadecimal numbers in here. You can tell this is this is this is definitely rotted. I already saved this file. I'll be showing it playback soon. If I go into options, now the other EEPROM programmers will probably also have these options on here. I don't know how, how often they do, but I, I imagine they should. If I set VCC to 3 volts now, and I read it again, you see a lot of 80 in hex at the beginning now. You can tell it's a lot, it looks a lot more like audio. I saved that too. What I've done is I took the original file that I used then when I originally burned this EEPROM before it got bit rotted obviously and I compare it with the recovered file with a 3 volt VCC. Apologize again for this monitor.
I load the original X1 later blah 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 EEPROM the original file then with the VCC set to 3 volts I verify which compared the data on the chip to the file. If I set the voltage back, the VCC back to the regular 5 volts, it won't verify. I try to verify, <gasps> verify error. But once I take my VCC down to 3 volts, the files match exactly. What, what this shows is that an EEPROM that at least for some time had been sitting in enough ambient light or so to not fully erase the chip but cause some bit rot to occur I was able to actually recover all of the data off of the chip by lowering the VCC absolute beautiful thing especially for anyone interested in restoring vintage computers and other similar things that might have a really old EEPROM inside. There's still hope is what I'm saying. Now let's play the audio files as they are from the computer. We go to our good old friend Audacity. Then how about we import some raw data? First, bit rotted Lego music. It's from the Lego stop motion Black Rock X1, which was really, really cool. Highly recommend watching it if the sampling rate was like that. Let me make sure. So let me just cancel the import. 10505 is the sampling rate. Okay. So first the bit rotted version. So here the bit rot. Oh if I re if I loop it. take 3 volt VCC recovered Lego music and import it repeat How about that, eh? A bit rotted EEPROM whose data has been recovered. I hope you enjoyed this video. Music not done by me, obviously. Done by the maker of Black Rock X1, the Lego stop motion film. Highly recommend it. Awesome film. Short film. Lego stop motion. Hope you enjoyed this video. Successfully recovering a bit rotted EEPROM's data, every bit of it.